tell you all day long, and I can preach on every Sunday about lying to the Holy Ghost. I'm not here to beat nobody up. That's not my job. That's not my assignment. The word, 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 the word. So there's going to be a point in time that we're going to get to Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 5. Because when you think you lying to the man or woman of God, and I'm not talking about just lying, or I'm telling you, I'm still, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about anything that goes against God. That's dangerous territory. That's why you got to be quiet sometimes. And then if you don't be quiet, you got to turn around and pray for mercy. See, you're not in control of your own life. You think you're in control of your life? And I can go to the Israelites, man. They got moved so frustrated. Here this God put a man to lead you to the promised land. But you're frustrated and you're aggravating them. Hallelujah. That they can't leave. They can't keep their eyes on what God is telling them to do. Dangerous. That's what God told me at 413. That is dangerous. The aggravated moment is so bad because of their complaining, because of their murmuring, because of their ungratefulness. This is the point that you need to avoid going. Because you can't do this in your own strength. Because if you try to do it in your own strength and your own intellect, you're going to fold. And you're going to miss the promise land. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Lead not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God, and he shall direct your path. You can you imagine when somebody's really talking best to you and you gotta walk away because you know God got this? But you don't want them to forfeit the blessing. You don't want them to forfeit what the healing. You don't want them to forfeit the peace. You don't want them to forfeit the love. But you gotta walk away because you love them so much. First and foremost, you love God. He's a light in the darkness. 
He's a way maker. Yes, he is. And see, I can tell you this because I'm, I'm the evidence. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You got to die to who you are. Yeah, hey, Rabbi Voss. I like that. You got to die to who you are. My Bible tells me, and I know that people don't want to hear like to hear this. When I pay my tithes and my offering, God is obligated to bless me. He's obligated to step in front of my battles. He's obligated to step in front of my children's battles because that's my seed. He's obligated to uphold me with his righteous hand. See, the kingdom plan is a setup for a blessed life. I don't know if y'all heard that. The kingdom plan is set up for the blessed life. I know that there's so much going on in the world. I want you to understand that we are aliens to this world because we have kingdom citizenship. We're in this world, but we're not of this world, but God has given us the tools to overtake anything that will keep us from getting what he's already planned for our lives. Every now and then, here at Supernatural Praise Ministries, we got to go back and revisit things. And just as John the Baptist preached, repent over 40 years. See, every time that you release God's word is a new revelation. It's not that you're preaching the same thing, but can you get a revelation that will bring manifestation? Hallelujah, Jesus. There were so many different things that God allowed me to hear in the spirit. He allowed me to hear John 10 and 10. The thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. That means he comes to bring distraction. He wants to distract your, distract your mind. Because he knows where you're going. He knows what God is about to take you. But if he can give you the forfeit it. So you can't take things personal. If you take it personal, y'all remember back in the, back maybe years ago I said I always use the analogy of a German shepherd. Every now and then you gotta pull that German shepherd out and say, sick. This is the German shepherd. Sick. Sick. Yeah. Because we know that the thief cometh but the steal. Why is it that a thief comes to steal? That means you must have, you must have some value. Right, right. There's something in your space that he wants. And a lot of times we use material stuff as cars, houses, uh, money, but he comes to steal your joy. Can you imagine? I want you to see this in the spirit. Everything is going well and you rejoice in it. It seems like, not seem like it is. Things is going according to God's way. Y'all mind if I minister a little bit today? And there's a saying that somebody would throw a monkey wrench into your peace, into your joy. See, that what the, that's, that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to, if he can take that from you, now you're operating in the midst of a distraction. And see, that distraction will take your eyes off Jesus. 
And as I read the commentary in Exodus last night, Exodus 16, with the Israelites and Moses and Aaron, the Holy Ghost is so good. Because I didn't memorize this. I didn't write it down. But the Holy Ghost knows when to bring it back to your remembrance. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. As I was reading it, got to the com uh, commentary, it says, God was showing the Israelites that he wanted to supply their needs. But what got in the way was their complaining. Their murmuring. Now God delivered them out of Egypt. And they're going to go back and say, but Lord, the Lord could have kept us, let us stay there and then had pots of meat and bread. And, but you were still in bondage. See, what they was missing was they was trying to satisfy the flesh. But they didn't have no peace in the spirit. And see, the flesh activate the soul realm, which is your emotional realm. And it puts you in position to complain. See, somebody right now don't have a place to lay their head. And God has blessed you to have a place to lay your head. Somebody this morning is laying on a park bench in the rain with a cardboard box over them. Somebody didn't have food to eat on last evening. What the commentary was showing me and telling me was that God was trying to allow them to, to operate in faith. He was giving them the opportunity to operate in faith. But complaining canceled faith. This is the Holy Ghost. I, I'm, I didn't memorize this, but he's bringing it back to my remembrance. And I'm literally seeing it on the page. I don't have the Bible that I was using. But the, it's written on my heart. Get out my sheep. And I'm blessing the Lord today because we can't do it without the Holy Ghost. We can preach that sound doctrine all day long, all night long. But you got to yield to the Spirit of God. You got to make this personal. There was a template, there was a blueprint when I was growing up as a little boy at Rock Hill AME Church that during the summer revival, we would go down to the morning bench and we would seek the Holy Ghost, meaning tarry for the Holy Ghost. We would stay there. Jesus told the disciples, stay in Jerusalem, tarry. Until the Holy Ghost comes. So we can speak sound doctrine all we want. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to always operate in your own intellect. You can't get the full, man full manifold of the healing, the full manifold of the blessings. It's my job. It's the leader's job of this church. Matter of fact, this ministry. My wife brought something here. It reminded me. Brought it back to my attention. Do you understand why it don't say supernatural praise ministry church? Because we're not a church. We are ministry. And the ministry produces a, an experience. So we are looking for an experience from on high. We can say the church building. But I want you to understand God wants us to experience his touch. And that starts with the Holy Ghost.
This is how we're going to get up out of this earth ground, too. We need the Holy Ghost. God said, I need you to come off, get off the surface. And as y'all hear those keys this morning on the keyboard, it represents a sound. That sound creates a vibration that taps into a frequency. You tap into that frequency that's flowing in the universe. Hear about Sunday and we'll see. And I just hear and I feel the wind. As Acts 2, 2 through 4 says, and suddenly.
Can you imagine how you read Jesus' heart? All this senseless killing. happening in the world. I don't have time to go horizontal against somebody else. And he allowed me to know when you're on the right track, there's going to be resistance. They're going to be different things. It's going to come against you. Say, but the, the burden, neither the battle is yours, it's mine. He said, But I've given you a confidant. And it's the Holy Ghost. And he said, That Holy Ghost comes with different characteristics. And it's designed to keep you as we have been talking about that tunnel vision. As we were talking about that tunnel vision, the Holy Ghost is designed to keep you, keep your eyes in front of you. Because see, if you mess around and look to the left or the right, you're getting off course. God did not deliver you from where you was before for no reason. It's not for you to turn around and go back. Can you ride the stone mountain? Can you ride the storm out? There's a lot. Today, there was a lot of uh, people that may not go to churches today or because of what's going on, the elements on the outside. Don't you know God's in control? Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. But the Holy Ghost, we need him. He's the one that's going to keep us on the straight and narrow. tell you and follow you up and say that you said something, you did something, you wrong. If you feel the Holy Ghost now. Because the Holy Ghost will bring conviction. Amen. He said the Holy Spirit convicts us, convicts of sin and wrongdoing. Many fail to respond to his reproof. But continue to practice their sinful ways. Unless they repent, they are doomed for death. The Bible promised us. You don't know the day or the you don't know the hour or the day. But I'm coming back for a church without a spot or a wing. It's called about this earthly town now. I don't want to get caught on the on the outside of the ark of safety with God. I don't want to do that. Because he said when you know better, then you need to don't do that. And I'm not here to point fingers at nobody. The word is good all by itself. I'm not here to throw no shade at nobody. The word is good all by itself. Where the shoot, where the shoot, whoever the shoot fits, let it be there. Where, where the chips fall, let it fall. God, you just bear with me just for a few minutes, okay? And that's John 8, 16 and 8. That, that's, that's what that's referring to. The Holy Spirit, hallelujah, also, where the Holy Spirit reproves us from wrong words, thoughts, deeds, actions, we must ask for forgiveness.
We must ask for forgiveness and cleanse it. God, clean me. Clean my heart. See, we all know when we have done something wrong. Because we was taught like this from a child. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Holy Spirit converts a lot of us with a Christian spirit because we don't want to be converted. Because we saying, I can't do this no more. I can't hang out with the fellas no more. I can't do whatever. I can't do that no more. So, all we got to do is yield to the Holy Ghost. Yield to God. Because see, it's not for us to fix ourselves. It's for God to do that. So that's why it goes back to complaining. I'm not going to complain about no. And even if I find myself trying to complain about my own self, Lord, please forgive me. So I don't have time to complain about what somebody else is not doing or what they are doing that they shouldn't be doing. Look at this. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Repent and be baptized. And I'm not talking about the physical baptism. I'm talking about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, that's Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And these are scriptures that you can write down and you can study and show yourself approved. And the first thing he has allowed me to see about that repentance. Faith brings forgiveness. Forgiveness of sins. The Holy Spirit bears, bears witness through the spirit of one who has become, who has came into the kingdom. He bears witness now that you're a family. You're in the family of God. Then it says conversion. Break new life in Christ. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. And even as God allowed me to see on last Sunday the consecration. Jesus consecrated every day of his life. And if Jesus is inside of us, is it just a 40-day fast? Is it just a seven-day fast? Is it just a three-day fast? And as we were saying on last Sunday, it's not a it's, it's, it's physical, but what God wants us to operate in the spirit. Consecration from jealousy, from gossip, from backbiting, from thinking unclean thoughts. That's consecration. That's the real consecration. And as you as, as you walk in that consecration, there are going to be different things that's going to break off of you. You're going to die to who you really are. The things that I used to do, as I and see that see that 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 fast and that consecration get you on on course to break some things off of you. You see, you got to break sometimes. You got to break you off of you. You got to die to who you are. And you may you make it personal. It takes your mind off of thinking about what somebody else is doing. See, your assignment is not my assignment. Just as my wife, she's my wife, but her assignment is not my assignment. Her assignment is my assignment is not her assignment. Just bear with me a few minutes. I got to get this to y'all. Conversion brings new life in Christ. It gives a new faith. Now your whole mindset is shifted. Your perception is different. New hope. Something I got hope.
hold on to. Something fresh I can hold on to. New love. Then I can open up my heart. Not just physically, but I can open up my heart in the spirit. I can feel your spirit. I know what you're about to say. There's times that my wife would think something. And before I could say it, before, before she could say it, I already said it. See, that's, that's not physical. That's spiritual. This is when you begin to be on one accord. Not just one accord with each other, but one accord with heaven. With heaven. Marriage. I'm not gonna say that this is since it's there. That's a holy vow. Through sickness and death, through all of that. And I know that even there was a law written in the old testament that you couldn't get married if you were this and that, the devil is alive. Jesus destroyed that. He destroyed that. The enemy will try to have you captive and say, oh, you can't get married no more. Because of what different things? That's not true. I'm going to leave that to another one. That's what I'm saying. It, it could be, but I got to stay on course. For the old days has passed away. When your mind is beginning to be renewed, the old things, stop looking at it, oh, I gotta change. No, God wanna change you. <laughs> he wanna change you. He really wanna change you. And He changes you through His Spirit. Because it's not based upon your intellect. Or what you think it should be. Or what the world say it is. No, it's based upon kingdom principles. Renew your mind. The third thing is the Holy Spirit cleans. Don't you want to be clean? Just as you clean your physical body. You need a detox in the spirit. You need your spirit need to be detoxed. Check this. Acts chapter 15, verse 9. Just reading a portion of that scripture. It says, purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith. Notice it says purify the heart. <clears throat> and see, see, you can't see nobody else's heart. You don't know what this person is going through. But I know a man that can change you suddenly. What that, who's that man? Holy Ghost. See, he's a gentleman. He's a man. He's not something. Stop saying something told me this and something. Let me know. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Check this. Some Christians fail to make a total commitment to God, to Christ. They are unwilling to give up a certain thing for Christ. What are those things? Habits. Affections. Possessions. They're not willing to give those up. But we all got a crumble. He said, pick up your cross. Are you willing to pick up your cross? Look at this. We must 
surrender everything to Christ. Everything. You say, well, you may, you may tell someone in the congregation that, oh, I gave this up. But see, God knows everything. <laughs> he knows everything. So you may tell me one thing, but he knows the truth. He knows the truth. Habits, that's something spiritual. Affections, that's something spiritual. I found myself, I think it was one day, I don't know what day, I can't remember what day, but my wife and we was riding back in Columbia. And when I said I'm full, I'm sold out for God, I'm not talking about nobody else. I'm talking about me. And I just started crying. Driving, crying. And I was thinking about Lord, here's I'm traveling back and forth. And I remember times that I didn't even have gas here in Orangeburg. And I began to give him glory so good to me. And the only thing I can do is say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And to go farther on and say that as I see cars beside the road, because you have given me reliable transportation. I can kind of count it on my fingers. When I was beside the road, beside the road. But when he did allow me to be beside the road, he showed himself great and mighty. I mean, he revealed himself. Because it was to push in the hands of faith. So the tears, which what we're talking about now is cleanse. The tears was cleansing anything that was in me that would try to hold me captive to my past. I was rejoicing, Lord, I thank you. Tears rolled down, and my wife said, What's wrong? I said, I can't help it. Tears rolled down my face. And it was an account with God as the clouds were shifting. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I give you glory for the cleansing. See, tears is not always sad. Not always sorrow, but tears is that victory. Come on, man. Can, can y'all feel that? Yeah. Tears is my victory. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. See, see, God has to. Sometimes He allows to be when in a position that our backs is against the wall. I'm at a crossroad. Which way do I go? I don't know what to do, Lord. And it's okay to release those tears because he heard my cry. Yay. He heard my cry. He heard my cry. How many of you know that God is listening? How many of you know that God is listening? How many of you know that he's listening? He heard my cry. We almost finished. When we are willing to yield to the Holy Ghost, He's ready to cleanse and fill us with His love. 
because as a believer, there's going to be challenges. I got a text for you this morning that my sister in Christ. See, when the Holy Ghost, you'll feel the Holy Ghost. The devil knows. You can't get, you, we can't be ignorant to Satan's devices. In other words, in order to, if we, if, if, we, if we put ourselves in a position not realizing that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, then he will catch it. It's just like, just like the parables of the seed. Some the birds will come and catch those seeds before they catch root. She was just released. She said, you know that everybody is not happy <laughs> for what God is doing. Your life and my life. But one thing I love about this, we never go look, we never go Harold Song. We keep our eyes on God. We recognize it. We rebuke it. We go up in the realm of the spirit and eradicate it. And move on to the next thing. Because see, everybody laugh up in your face. Come on now. Everybody. We have a saying down in where I grew up in, in Vance Hall Hill area. A dog that bring a bone. Or carry a bone. And then sometimes you gotta set them up and give them a bone. Hallelujah. Sometimes you gotta set them up and give them a bone. And when they bring it back, you know it came from them. Run and tell that. That's it. I didn't say that in the wild, I just said that on the crowd now. Now devil, you go run and tell that. Go run and tell that. This is what they're doing over at Supernatural Praise Ministry. They're talking about the Holy Ghost. Yeah. They ain't talking about nobody, but they're talking about the Holy Ghost. Yeah. They're about Sunday they both see. They're talking about the Paracletus. The one who aids and assists us and guides us through all truth and righteousness. Yeah. So if you want to talk about something, tell them that we're talking about the Holy Ghost. Almost done. Thank you. Look at this. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Holy Ghost comforts. Nobody can love you better than God. <laughs> I don't care who it is. Nobody can love you better than God. This is coming from oh, Jesus. I think John 14 and 16. I'm not sure. Check that. Make sure. He shall give you another comforter. This is what Jesus said. That he may abide in you forever. Somebody, is it John 14, 16? Is that? I'm not on point with that. That's it. He shall give you another comforter that he may abide within you forever. He didn't say for just this week or just this day. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, he's your keeper there. So you don't even have to try to keep yourself. He's your keeper. This is the word. He's your keeper. So in other words, he's pretty place for you to get out of the way. There is little comfort in today's world. We have war, threats of wars, Separation, divorces, 
shortages, inflation, frustration, disappointments, plagues, plagues, plagues. Plagues is not here to stay. How many of you know that the children, the Israelites, was the children of Goshen? They were in a city that was carved out that God protected and shielded them. How could they have made it to the promised land if they didn't overcome the plagues? So the devil's job, Satan's job, Lucifer's job is to tell you, bird flu won't take me out, bird with. I ain't got nothing about bird food. Come on now. All these different diseases, chicken pot, mumps, and all of these different things. I'm still standing. Come on now. So there will be plagues. But Jesus has overcome all of that for us. There will be wars. Ecclesiastes talks about there's a time to do this, there's a time to do that. If you go down the list, there's a lot of different things. There's a time to die, there's a time to get all these different things. So these things must come to pass. Hallelujah, Jesus. Frustration. Scrap's depression. Those are demons, straight from hell. You think a demon is something look scary like a monk? No, those frustration, aggravation, depression, stress, all of that stuff, those are demons. Amen. And they have they have assignments. The latter part of John 10 and 10 says, I come. Jesus said, I come. That you, me, every believer. We'll have life and have it more abundantly. Not just regular life. We're supposed to be flowing in the abundance. The abundance. We're supposed to walk in the abundance life. Anybody can, anybody can just put a tag in themselves and say, I'm walking in the abundance life. Abundance. So I don't have time to be a mother of grumbling. Because you're looking at your present situation. God allowed them to go through that in the, in the wilderness so they can move in faith. Spirit of bondage. Backbiting. Scars. I can't say that. Because see, the devil wants to hold you captive. But Jesus has overcome the world for me, for you, 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 and you. confronted with difficult times, diff difficulties, but they can pass. The peace and comfort that only the presence of the Holy Ghost can give you. When I, as I was traveling and the tears were flowing, I was loving on the Lord. I wasn't feeling down or bad, but I was loving on the Lord. Because the Holy Spirit, He didn't come upon me, He fled up in me. So what was in me had to come out of me. As the tears were flowing, I was being purged. That means He's making room. In my father's house, there's many mansions. 
Now I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about here on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He's making provision. I go to prepare a place for you. See, he had to go for the setup. The setup for the healing. The setup for your prosperity. The setup to confirm Abraham's seed. I've been young now and old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So I don't have to beg God for healing. I don't have to beg him for my peace. I don't have to beg him for love. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And for those that believe on Jesus Christ shall not perish but have everlasting life. My conclusion is there's nothing wrong with homiletics. Who would have called it? There's nothing wrong with that. And if God allow me to do it, then I'll do it. Because I'm operating with the Holy Ghost. It's not about my I don't need to go to school for that. The Holy Ghost lives in me. But today he needs someone to have a residue of good service to carry them on. It's not about a feel-good message. It's not about your feelings. It means your emotions, your soul realm. It's about, see the word is meant to tear down and build up. That's just like going to the weight room. Lift the weights. You gotta tear those muscles down. In order for them to build up. That means you wanna get rid of some fat. Some stuff that's not supposed to be there. Some mess. You keep working out every day. That fat gotta go. You say, well, look like I'm not losing no weight. No, because now you're beginning to gain muscle. That means it confirms that God is in control. Not just my physical muscles, but he had to prepare me mentally. Yes, Lord. Receive it. Yes. Thank you, Lord. John 16 and 13. How about it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. That means I don't have to worry about making the wrong turn. I don't have to worry about whether I'm going in the wrong direction. When the Holy Ghost is in control. When the Holy Ghost try to live their lives dependent on their own strength. So you focus it on this is what I can do. You limited God. You're not even giving it to God. You only based on, you base it on what you can do. Hallelujah. 
They fail because Hallelujah. The infinite power is not satisfied for success, for a successful living. Because you're depending on you. It keeps God out of the equation. With God, all things are possible. But as you continue to toll night after night, day after day, you are not living in the full manifold of the blessings that God has for you, the blessings, the promises that was done through Jesus Christ. We're not living in fullness of it. We need guidance in the direction of the Holy Ghost. God is omniscient. He knows everything. He knows all about you. He created you. You know what he has you have in your head? I know a lot of times we say God got all power in his hand. God is the power. That's bigger than the hand. He is the power. He is the power. And the next thing is, a lot of times we say, oh Lord, I need you to go down to the hospital. I need you to go see about my son. Now. You don't even realize you're already operating, operating in authority. You just need to say it by faith. Because see, God is omnipresent God. That means he already had the hospital. He already in that place that you're trying to send him to. And Jesus demonstrated it even as the servant said, you don't have to come. But can you send healing to my child? So turn that around and say, you know what, Lord, by faith and through prayer, because prayer can go where we can't go. Heal my child. Move in the midst of the shortcomings of a family now. Move, Lord! Because you're everywhere at the same time. He assures them, the Holy Ghost assures them of eternal life hereafter. That's Acts 1 and 4, 1 and 8. He assures you. He assures you eternal life. This was a word today that I'm so grateful and blessed. God did it. Amen. Thank you did it. God did it. Thank and even as He's given me, He gave me all these different topics and scriptures and verses, He allowed me to implement a few. without him. If you want to stay on that same level, then you stay on that same level. But in order to see the supernatural, you have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody give God some glory. Somebody magnify him. We bless him. Hallelujah. I give God the glory, the honor, the praise, and I want to thank God for each and every one of you. Hallelujah, Jesus. For finding the not robbery today to come and fellowship with us and just be about your father's business. 
We are Supernatural Praise Ministries and we are located here on the East Coast of, South, of the United States, Orangeburg, South Carolina. I am Apostle Joseph Grant, along with Lady Grant and the Supernatural Praise Ministries. We thank you for joining us today. We thank you for the experience of who God is. Come on, let's give God some glory. Hallelujah.